Good afternoon. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reform Presbyterian Church as we gather together for our Wednesday evening uh, Bible study. Uh, last week we began uh, in the first chapter of the book of James, and now we are continuing the first chapter with a look at verses 9 through 11. Let us begin our time in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are the God over all things. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are not the God of the dead, but of the living. And to God, we give thanks for the living testimony that we have of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the power of the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of your saints. To God, you lift us up into your presence. You comfort us by your truth. And you remind us daily of the freshness of your mercy. And to God, we pray as we come to your word tonight that your hand would be upon our souls, that you will feed us with your truth. And dear God, that we would grow not only in our head knowledge, but more importantly, in our heart knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the wonderful Counselor and Prince of Peace, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, tonight, as I said, we start here in the uh, first chapter of the book of James, as we look at this book written by the uh, brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we do so, let me go ahead and read for us these three verses, 9, 10, and 11. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man, also will fade away in his pursuits. Amen. Now, this is something that uh, James will do quite often in this book is he will contrast the poor and the rich. Uh, later on, we will see a warning from James about how we treat uh, the rich and the poor. It's something that's native unto the human heart to uh, look upon those with wealth as somehow being uh, moral, morally superior than those without wealth. Uh, those of uh, uh, peerage, you know, somebody who's a noble, uh, whether he be a duke or a king or a queen or uh, a prince, you know, we have a natural affinity in our hearts to recognize uh, positions in society. And the warning that James has here at the beginning of his book is both for the poor and the rich. In this opening verse, uh, verse nine, he says, let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Uh, in both of the cases here, what James is wanting people to do is not to look at their earthly station. They are not to regard their worth to be based upon how much money is in their bank account. Uh, if they are poor, the, warn, the, the word uh, here from James is, let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. Now, how can a lowly brother, a brother who is without financial resources, be exalted? Well, he's not, as so many in our day and age uh, think, he's not then to look for riches. Uh, his happiness, his joy, his contentment is not going to come from gaining financial resources. You just need to look at all of the examples that we see uh, for people who win the lottery. Now, of course, as a, a Reformed Christian, I don't believe anybody should be playing the lottery uh, because we don't believe in luck and chance. It's a violation of the Eighth Commandment. But you see the reality of lottery winners. The majority, vast majority of them are bankrupt within uh, a year, uh, a few years of gaining all of this wealth. They are just as miserable, just as poor as they were before they gained all of this worldly wealth. So what is it exactly that the lowly in the eyes of James are to be exalted by? Well, think about what James' purpose is in this book. His purpose in this book is is to help the weak in Christ to grow in their appreciation for what Christ has done. So the lowly in Christ 
what has been done to them, right? They've been exalted into the very heavens themselves because it's no longer they who live, but Christ who lives in them. And so if they are living in Christ, can they be more wealthy than they? Is there anything in comparison to the wealth of the riches of Jesus Christ? Well, of course there's not. And so for the lowly believer, James wants them to not look upon their earthly position because there's no hope in it. Just as he goes on to say, there's no hope for the rich man in their earthly possessions and earthly place. What good does it do to a king to die? Right? You know, what's the thing that uh, keeps the poor man and the rich man together? It's the fact that they both die. Right? He who dies with most toys still dies. And when we think about that particular work, you know, we think of you know, Lazarus and the rich man. Right? You know that story from Luke 16 well. He dies and goes to hell. Lazarus dies and goes into Abraham's bosom. And the, the picture there that's being painted is perfectly applicable here to what we see in, the, in James 9 through 11. In James 9 through 11, what happens to the flower of the field? It passes away. And if it passes away, what do we see happen later on? Later on, we see that the riches are of no worth in hell. What was he supposed to consider to be wealthy in his life? One well, of the very words of God. You know, let him have Moses and the prophets. And so this passage that we see here in James 1, 9 through 11 is a reminder, both for the rich and the poor, that their true identity, their true wealth, is to be in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. And so brothers and sisters, as we close our time here today, we need to remind that and be reminded of it every day. No matter what your house looks like, no matter what kind of car you drive, no matter uh, how many zeros follow the one in the bank, the reality is, is those who are poor in spirit are to be lamented. For they know not the riches that we have in Jesus Christ. So as we close tonight, let us close uh, with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for the word that you've given to us today. And to God, we pray that we would always look unto Christ and to see the riches that we have in our Savior, that we might be blessed through him. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Uh, Y'all have a, a blessed evening.